just a second and then counts it down. Ready? Welcome to sunny Winter Haven, Florida. I'm Lane Dog Bowers and I am in the boat with friends of mine, some of which we have barefooted with me, we discussed the other day, 21 years. That makes me old. But here we are, we're working on a little bit of cross in the wake, and I thought I would uh, bring this discussion to you guys and share with you guys some secrets that I found out years ago that are awesome. So if you're a barefooter and you want to cross the wake and you're struggling, let me give you a breakthrough that's going to blow your mind. Now, if you guys have been following my posture glide power band on the footer's edge, by the way, for those of you who aren't, go to the footer's edge.com, add your name and email, and I'll send you my free ebook, tons of tips, and, and you can get these videos sent to you. So do that. But it, today, here, if you're a barefooter and you want to cross the wake, let me share with you some secrets. Now, I'm not going to stand to do this. I'm going to do this sitting for a reason. In, in, when I talk about gliding, posture, glide, and power band, let's talk just about gliding for a minute. I'm showing from the side. My buddy Steve's filming. If you notice, a great glide, I got my shins with a slight forward angle. I got my knees. If I drop a plumb line from the end of my knee, it's a good glide is right over top of your ankle. A great glide is kind of like a snow ski boot where your shins angled forward. Now notice I'm purposely, it looks like I'd be only on my heels, but in the water your foot would actually sink. So this isn't really good practice because on the water you would need to flex. And if for some reason you've got bad flex, there's no use bringing your feet back this far if you can't get the ball of your foot off the carpet. But I'm going to assume that you can set a great glide. This is what we normally do for barefooting in the glide, in our three-point in our one foots, in front to backs, back fronts. This glide is critical to everything I teach. So it might blow your mind that I'm now gonna talk in a completely different language. Front slalom only I'm talking about. Actually, I'll expand that to front slalom and rough water skiing. If some of you guys wanna just go on rough water, it's a crappy day, or let's not say that, but let's just say it's really rough and so you can't do what you wanna do. So you wanna just do an endurance run? or you want to see how far you can make it in rough water. It's like switching from two-wheel drive to four-wheel drive. This may not, you may not be able to hold this great of a glide in rough water. So what we do is, and I don't want you to mix these. I'm not telling you that you need to sw use what I'm about to tell you and apply it to your regular barefooting. This is either rough water or crossing the wake, okay? So a lot of people are gonna freak out when I'm gonna tell you to hold your ears. Some of you, this is gonna be offensive. Straighten your legs and drop the front edge of your foot down. A lot of you guys are going, no. I've been working my whole life trying to get my glide set. And now Lane's telling me to straighten my legs. What's funny about this is I learned this, Ron Scarpa and I many years ago would be slaloming in our front slalom and edging as hard as we could looking at this same great glide and we couldn't figure out in front slalom, not back slalom, because that's a whole different ball game, but there were guys out there who had really, really bad barefoot form and we actually loved their front slalom and we couldn't figure it out for years and this is the secret that explains it. The reason some people who never practice in calm water in their life, they press out and they kind of get used to show skiing or having their legs straighter, their feet out and they just lower the front edge of their feet to kind of match the, the water a little bit. So now what I'm telling you to cross the wake, what I'm telling you is I want you to literally switch gears from two wheel drive to four wheel drive. You're going from gliding like this, I want you to practice gently, not a leg press hard, gently extend your knees, but you can't keep the glide, otherwise you'd be bouncing and jumping like this. You gotta literally transition, learn to come out and keep your feet kind of relatively flat off the waters. Still, you don't want the front edge to catch, otherwise you will go down. But if you can learn, this secret unlocked front slalom for me and for tons of other people. Learn to ski with a relaxed, straight lower leg. And then what we do is, in front slalom, it's all about setting your edge. What I'm showing you here is not gonna get less foot in the water, it's gonna set more foot in the water. I'm gonna show you how to get twice as much foot in the water. 
to let you know when I'm when we're I'll, I'll do it towards the camera a little bit. When you're doing a slalom cross right, and stop leaning over where you want to go and turning the handle and playing and moving it. That doesn't matter. In front slalom, it's all about your feet and setting an edge. So we take our feet here, we go here, and in a great front slalom edge, as you're turning your foot down, you'll see my body's rotating because I can't really turn my foot without, I can't really make my foot go that way without a little bit of edge. It's just like a slalom ski, by the way. But in terms of barefoot, you wanna, the farther you turn this edge, the more you can press the front of your foot down in. It's mind blowing, but you, if you turn your foot hard enough, you can press the front of your foot down as hard as you want. I've experimented with it. What doesn't work is pressing your feet down as hard as you want forward, because they will catch. But if you turn and with, as you're turning, think of this as a steering wheel, your foot steering wheel and accelerator, as you turn, you can press the front of your edge into the water. Now, if you take a picture of a video behind the boat, let's say that uh, Steve up there is looking at me behind the boat. In the middle of the wake, it should look like, if you are really setting your edge, whether you're doing a two foot or a one foot, this foot, if it's edged properly, here's a normal two foot stance. You're skiing like this. In a slalom cross, and you, as you're edging, stop trying to do all this, but as you turn that foot and edge hard, you'll if you edge hard enough, this foot can't stay in the water. I recommend, by the way, the easiest way to learn this is instead of trying to stand up and cross the wake, cut as hard as you can away from the wake. So get up, press your feet out, drop them down, and experiment with how hard you can push that foot down and edge it. Don't flex the ankle. See what I'm hearing? This won't work. Press it down and edge and what will happen is you will carve harder than a slalom skier you will literally set so much power so here's what i recommend i'm going to try and make it short i'm not good at that obviously but i'm trying so you press your feet out set your edge and see if you can carve away from the weight carve out as far as you can on a slalom ski if you can do that i promise you're going to have great two foot and one foot slalom this does not apply to backwards, so just keep that in mind in case some of you misconstrue my words. So when you send me a video, if I see this, if you're looking like this in the middle of the wake, notice, Steve, my foot's over here. I'm, this is what most people do. They kind of start to push off of this, but they lean into it like this. That's going to catch. That's why you see people like cross into the wake and like, <laughs> that's not, you need to turn don't try and move the handle over here. That's not going to work. Literally turn your feet, press until your foot comes under the rope. I've told these guys another tip for it. Imagine I'm hanging a cowbell from this rope. Imagine I hang a rope to a cowbell, and here's my two foot form. If you're slaloming right and edging, my foot is under the cowbell. You could literally let go with this hand if you're edging hard enough because all the weight's in this arm. Don't try to pull with this arm. It's all in the foot. Turn and edge. But notice my foot's under here. If you do a video analysis of your own skiing and you're having to cross in the wake and it looks like this, look, my weight is here. My foot's over here. If you've ever tried to go on combo skis, you can't edge it, you can't edge it the wake, then go even and try and cross the wake. Your skis are, wanna go that way. So what you gotta do is Turn your skis, set your edge like you would on a slalom, and what you want to do is progressively set your edge. So if you le first learn to cut away from the weight, come back in, don't cross the weight. Press, edge, 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 and come out. Try and go set your edge and go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, until you, if you're pressing and turning where you're nonstop rotating and driving that edge down, you're going to be able to fly out there until there's no more room left for you to go out okay that's what i want you to do that would be the perfect scenario then you're gonna have incredible slalom right off the bat but make your edge progressive a lot of barefooters make the same they cut out they're good on one side they cut out 20 feet away from the wake and they go like this and they fly into the wake they get nervous then they even up on it and then their feet like fall apart and split because they're not holding the edge so think of doing this out 
and then progressive edge, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and don't stop turning, pressing, and cross. Don't, don't worry about where the wake is. Worry about a progressively increasing edge. So anyway, we could talk about this a lot. Do you guys get, does this make sense, or do you it's have another question? Sense. Yeah, it's a combination of getting that edge and straightening your legs, is what I hear. You want, you gotta go from here, out to here, and you could practice this. One thing you could do on your own is go to roughly a one foot speed, you could practice on the short rope. Take your feet from here, out to here. Here, out to here. Get used to going here. Now practice to a one foot, but notice I'm leaving my foot pointed. Like leave your foot pointed instead of flexing, in which I always want for your regular one foots. Now I want you to practice for slalom, raise it pointed. It's the worst looking form in the world, but we're only gonna use it for slalom. Then behind the boat practice, setting that edge and get to where you guys can see your foot coming under the cowbell. So, any, does that, anything I missed there or something that doesn't make sense? No, it's just, it's a head thing about keeping your foot flat. It's not it's only keeping your foot flat, you are increasing the edge. And when I say increasing, I mean burying. Any of you guys who are good on a slalom ski, you don't take your slalom ski and go, and that's how you cross the wake. You bury it. The reason you're not nervous about catching anything is the ski is what, six feet long? I mean, you can bury that thing all the way, probably three quarters or more, I'm guessing, on that edge. You can bury the inside edge of that thing into the water. Your foot is the same way. If you bury, you're, some of you are thinking, oh, there's no way. If, I, if my big, the ball of my big foot goes in, I'm going under. Not if this whole side of my edge is out. I literally have increased, my foot has gone from this big to now this big, but the water line is actually going across my foot underneath, of course, here. So you literally can edge and drive the front of your foot in the water because this side is out. I hope that makes sense. God bless you guys. And if you have a question, do me a favor, like the video. Please do me, if you know anybody who wants help with this, Please like it, please share it, and leave me a comment below. If you have a question, I would love to answer your question. I'll, I'll personally answer it, but I'll also share it uh, with other people. So anyway, God bless you guys, expect a miracle, and we are out of here.